The Mining Weekly Online is talking to Rod Pickering, Chairman of the Centre for Mechanised Mining Systems Steering Committee, which is located at Wits University. Rod, what sort of alternative mining technologies can be introduced in our very difficult narrow reef mining scenario? Hard rock narrow reef mining has to change. We, we, we cannot continue the way we are at the moment. It's, it's absolutely unacceptable that we, we're going to end up by having none of these conventional mines left. And I'm not, I'm not being negative about the wage demands. I'm not saying they shouldn't be getting these kind of wages. If we can't keep on doing things the way we have to do them, then we have to look at new ways to doing them. I'm doing some work with a company at the moment to mine a narrow reef, and it's only about 400 millimeters thick, but to mine it with mechanized equipment, which enables us to, to get the best of both worlds. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do long hole drilling, we're going to blast the waste material into the back, which is going to form a, a, a fill, a, a backfill. So it's blasted backfill that we're going to achieve with it. And, and then we've got long holes which are being put in the foot wall of the reef, and we're just going to pop the reef up. Um, and then you clean the reef out. And, and, and that package, it, it sounds a little bit futuristic, but Imo Bock has been doing this for a number of years, but without, w without the benefit of mechanization. He's been doing it with, with hand drilling, and he's had a lot of success with it. But we're now taking it a step further and saying we want to do it as a fully mechanized process. So we develop two drifts on strike, and then we do long hole drilling between the two. We blast the waste material into the back area, and the density of that fill is going to be more than two. So it's going to be highly, a very dense fill that we get to place in the back area. Pop, pop up the foot wall, and so we're getting the benefits Robbie spoke about, about not pulverizing the rock, not, not getting all the fines, not losing the gold. We're going to do a coarse breakage so we, we lose less material, and then you clean that out. You probably clean it out with a, uh, a little, one of these small dozers, which have been operating underground in the platinum mines. So the stoke becomes a no-go area. No people go in the stoke. They go in the developments on the side. So you've addressed the safety aspect. You haven't got people exposed. The people who are working there are operating equipment. So again, this big issue about paying people for the job they're doing, if they're much more productive in terms of ounces per person, then in fact you can pay them a lot more money than you would um, in, in a more typically um, conventional mining operation. And then if you look at this blasted backfill story, we can drill the long holes, that's known technology. The blasting needs to be controlled. We've got a huge variety in explosives that we can use today. And we've got fantastic initiation systems that we can use. All, all these things have progressed, so the technology is available. How do you put things together which enable you to, 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 to drill and blast and do it differently to get a different result, which at the end of the day is going to give you a lower cost per ounce, because that's where the money end lies, and a safer operation. The effort which has gone into cutting and developing cutting machines for, for these narrow reef hard rock mines, again, um, let's consider what's going on right now. Um, I, I was largely responsible for Sambic's foray into developing a cutting machine. With that cutting machine, we've cut 7,000 square meters of ground. Joy have got a machine which is underground, which is cutting. Sambic have been at it now for 10 years. On, on these low profile, cut, ex, well, very low. They're cutting 1.2, 1.3 meters um, stoke pits. It's no longer saying is I've got a 30 meter panel and I'm going to advance it six meters in a day. You know, you may be looking at advance rates considerably higher. So how are you going to change the layout? It's again, putting everything together. It's putting the technology and the layout and, and the package in, in such a way that we have safer, more productive mining. But in the chrome and platinum hard rock space, you've got this dip of 10 degrees, um, which is not excessive. In the hard rock mining and gold, you're talking about 23 degrees. What are you going to do about the 23 dip, 23 degree dip? 
that um, is haunting the gold, gold industries now. This, if we look at this, um, sec this blasting process, which is going to blast the material into the back area, if, if, you're, if you're actually driving to development ends on, on strike, then it doesn't matter what the dip is in between. And, and, and if, you, if this sounds unusual to you, just think about narrow vein mining. I mean, all over the world there are narrow vein mines. It's probably, uh, there are probably more narrow vein mines than anything else because you get them everywhere, almost anywhere you get the green stones. And if you look at what they do on these narrow vein mines, what do they typically do? You put a development drive in on the reef here, you put another one on the reef here, and you do long hole drilling between the two to enable you to break the rock and, uh, and, and take it out. We, we, we're really talking the same methodology, we're just applying it into a different environment. So it, it's, again, it's known technology, it's using known equipment, we now need to adapt the equipment because in narrow vein you can, you can live with, with narrow tall machines, but in narrow reef you want low flat machines. But, but it's not it, it, it's not fundamentally a different... The functionality of the machine is the same. <laughs> For the selective blasting process, you can, you, can, you can tram narrow, you can take the narrow out, but you can mine wide because you're stuffing all the wide into the back area. And so you can actually have existing equipment, which is fairly what, we would, what I would call low profile, 1.8 meters operating, and you can still mine a narrow ore body. If that was Rod Pickering, Chairman of the Centre for Mechanised Mining Systems Steering Committee based at the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg.